Truth trees can be tough, so why not make another video where we do some more examples that are a little bit more challenging than the previous one. So we're going to work through two examples to show that these sets of woofs are inconsistent. Here's the first one, and here's the second one. So let's get right into it. Let's turn on our lines to make things everything neat and orderly, and let's do this. Okay, uh, I have two well-formed formulas here. It looks like I have a negated AND in the top, and I have just an AND on the second line. So I'm going to deal with the second one first. Why? Because this is AND decomposition, which means that if P and not not Q or R is true, this means that P is true and not not Q or R is true, which means we can just keep them under one branch. We don't have to do multiple paths yet. So we'll call these lines 3 and lines 4, and these come from 2, and this is AND decomposition. Okay, so now I gotta figure out, do I wanna decompose line one or line four next? Well, I wanna decompose line four for the same reason as above. And let's just walk through the reasoning here below. So I have not, not Q or R. So when is that one true? Well, that's true when not Q or R is false. And for that to be true, it has to be that not Q is false and R is false. This is just the same thing as saying that Q is true and not r is true. So when we decompose this line 4, we're going to get q, well specifically we're going to get not not q, because we're negating that not q, and we're going to get not r. So that will be lines 5 and 6, that comes from line 4, and we're doing not or decomposition. So I just walked through the truth table for, for or not the truth table, but the little uh, truth table definition for why that works. If you're still a little confused, I have a couple lecture videos on this stuff. Uh, at this point, we can deal with not not q, and we can just get q. So line seven, this is just double negation. So this comes from five. We call this dn for double negation. Now at this point, we have q, not r, and p. So we don't have any inconsistencies yet. But everything is decomposed now except for this first line. So let's worry about this one now. Not P and not not Q or R. So same reasoning here. I'm going to simplify this a little bit so I'm not writing the whole thing. When is not P and Q true? Well, that's true when P and Q is false. And that means there's two paths. Either P is false or Q is false. This is the same thing as saying that not P is true or not Q is true. So when we do our branching paths here, we're going to essentially get the negation of both sides as different possible branches. So on the left side, and I'm going to do this in blue, we're going to get not P as a possibility, and on the right side we're going to get not, not, not Q or R as a possibility. So here's our line 8, this comes from 1, and this is not and decomposition. So we can see here that things might start getting a little bit messy. What's nice is that at this point, we can close the left branch because we see P and we see not P. So we have a contradiction here. So we can't continue this branch anymore. What about the right side? Well, let's do double negation on not Q or R. So that comes from line eight, and that's just double negation. So we're getting rid of those two negatives out front. And that'll be line nine. Now, not Q or R, well, when is this true? We're gonna have some branching paths again. So either, well, let's do this one in yellow, either not Q is going to be true or R is going to be true. So this is line 10 here, this comes from 9, and this is or decomposition. So we dealt with that one. Now we see that we can close off both of these branches as well. Why? Because we have Q and we have not Q, there's a contradiction. We have R, we have not R, that's a contradiction. Therefore, both of those branches close, and because all of the branches in our tree are now closed, we know that this is inconsistent. So that means that all two of our assumptions, the ones in lines one and two, both of those cannot be true at the same time. If they do, we get essentially a contradiction. That means they're inconsistent. So that truth tree, a little bit more complicated than the ones we've done before. But still, we were able to do it, which is great. Let's take a look at a set of well-formed formulas, four of them in fact, and see if these are inconsistent. 
So lines one, two, and three, by conditional arrow and or, those will all have branching paths. I don't want to deal with those yet. So we're going to start with line four with the and. We're going to do and decomposition. So if D and not A or B is true, we're going to get D true. We're going to get not A or B true. So this will be line five and line six. Uh, these come from line four, and this is and decomposition. Okay. For the same reason as the last one, we're going to now do not A or B and decompose that, and that's going to give us not A and not B. So not A or B is true when not A is true and not B is true. So that comes from line six, and this is not or decomposition. Okay, and we'll call this line seven and line eight. So we've dealt with two complicated ones. So now I'm going to try to do this a little bit strategically. So I have D, I have not A, and I have not B. So I want to pick something to do next that has either a not D in it, or maybe we'll get a not A or a not B. So I'm looking at right now, I'm looking at three. I see C or not D. Okay, so let's just do this one. We're going to get a branching path. My branches here are going to be uh, quite, quite short in terms of the scope of the page. So line nine, if we, if we do three and we do or decomposition, either C is going to be true or not D is going to be true. Now, with C, we don't have anything happening. But with not D, we have a contradiction here. We have D, we have not D, so we can close this branch. Okay. So one branch is closed, and now we just have C if and only if A or B, and we have E arrow D. Okay. I don't see any benefit right now to doing E arrow D, so I'm just not going to do it at this point. I'll wait for it. But what I want to do now instead is I want to work with C if and only if A or B. So let's take care of this. And this will give us a branching path. Uh, I want this to be my line tool. Okay. So on one side of the path, if we have C as the same value as A or B, we're going to have C and A or B being true. Or in our other path, we're going to have not C and not A or B being true. So this comes from line one. And this is the biconditional decomposition. OK, what's nice is that on the right side, we can close this. Because we see not C, and we have C, we have a contradiction, that branch is closed. We don't have to continue that side. But this left side, C, A or B, we've got to keep going. Well, let's do decomposition on A or B. So we're going to have two situations. We're going to have one situation. Let's make sure these lines look nice together. We're going to have one situation where A is true, one situation where B is true. So this is line 12. This comes from line 11, and we're doing or decomposition. Now this is nice, because both of these branches close. Uh, a and not A is a contradiction. B and not B is a contradiction. Therefore, look, all of our branches have closed. At this point, because all of our branches are closed, we know that this is an inconsistent set of well-formed formulas. All four of these cannot be true at the same time, otherwise we get contradictions. So, even though, oops, I did not mean to hit that one, I meant to hit my arrow, even though we did not deal with the line two here, that doesn't matter. Because we've closed all of our branches, we've expanded enough, we find contradictions, so even if we expanded on E arrow D earlier in the proof, eventually we'd find that these all break apart and these all end up closing at some point. So these two well-formed formulas, or sets of well-formed formulas, were a little bit more challenging than what we saw in the previous videos. That's because we put all the rules together at once, we put in more assumptions, we had to look at more branching paths. So you might wonder, okay, when I watch you do it, things are fine, but when I do it on my own, things just get messy. So here's some strategies, and I'm going to officially write them out for you. And this is just, I did talk through these. I want to write these out. Uh, decompose, the first one is decompose and not or first. So why? Because you don't have branching paths. The fewer branching paths you have, the better, because that means that you have to 
do the proof on each on, on fewer branches. It just saves you paper. It saves you time. Two, uh, decompose relevant. Whoops. So what do I mean by a relevant woof? It means that if you have B somewhere earlier, then try to find the ones that would give you not B. That's your goal. You want to find contradictions. So work with things that you've already seen before, if possible. Uh, three, the third step is really just do the rest. I know this really isn't a nice strategy guide because it's only like, hey, do the easy stuff, do the relevant stuff, and then do the rest. But it's really the good strategy to take. Um, you know, the fewer branching paths you have, the better. Because you have less room for errors. When you find relevant woofs that give them contradictions, you can close more branches off. It just means you're doing less work in general. So if you have any questions, as always, post them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to help you when I can.